What's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Live from Red Hook here at the Function House. And tonight, we want to welcome to the show DJ Simon Heiliger. What's up, guys? How's everybody going? Did I say it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I was so right. nervous that Everybody I Everybody messes it up all the time. <laughs> What's up, man? Welcome to the show. Thanks, man. I've been wanting to come. I saw the show up with a couple of DJs that I know. Uh, Melissa Nikita, right? Yeah. Um, OD, and uh, I asked. I was like, you know, I, I, want, I want to be featured on this. Man. I like the spot. It's pretty dope. <laughs> Thank you, so, man. Yeah. Thank you. So Brooklyn born and raised? That's right. East Flatbush, Brooklyn born and raised. Uh, been there all my life. Uh, just I moved, but I'm coming back to Brooklyn. So everybody always comes back to Brooklyn. What's so. making you come back? The girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the girlfriend wants to come. So I'm like, all right, let's do this. Brooklyn I'm is there. in right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you decided where? Um, I'm probably Bushwick, most likely Bushwick. Bushwick yeah. is popping now. Yeah, well, yeah. So I think that's what I'm doing. Uh, don't don't quote me on that because she's popping. It's like, what is he talking about? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So born and raised in Brooklyn, then you moved out to Jersey. Yes, I moved to Newark. Uh, how long you been? At, how long I, were you I out was there? there for like nine years. Okay. Uh, Newark is a beautiful place. It has really one thing I like about Newark is like, like you know, in Brooklyn or even just New York in general, like you know, you go to street vendors, it's always like hip hop playing when they're selling CDs, whatever, which is nothing wrong with hip hop, but like in Newark, you get off the train and you hear vendors selling house music, like house CDs, and I'm just like wow, like, damn, this is dope, you know? And that's what really captured me. So it, growing up in Brooklyn, you had to be into a oh. different style of music. <laughs> well, I mean, I started playing hip-hop, you know. Um, I knew a couple of DJs that were into uh, reggae. I, I mean, I'm, I come from, like, a soca, calypso, reggae type of uh, family. And, um, you know, I don't know what it was. Uh, one, uh, it was actually uh, in high school. A friend was like, you know what? Here's this Tiesto CD. You need to listen to it. I'm like, why? Started listening to it. And I was like, cool. It's different. You know, he's like, you know what? You need to go to Club Exit. You need to go check him out. And I was like, all right. It's cool. Went to Exit. Turned me out. And that was it. I heard Tiesto for the first time in 99. And that was it. So you said goodbye to so Yeah, and all of that. Well, I mean, I was tired of myself getting shot up at basement parties. You know? <laughs> I mean, my, every time I have to buy new speakers because there's holes in them. So it's just like, had enough. That's had it. enough. So, so you went to Exit, you heard Tiesto. Yeah. And that opened up the doors. That you. just opened it up for me. And, um, you know, Paul Van Dyke, Paul Okafor. Trance was my thing. You know, I, I used to listen to Trance heavy. And then... All of a sudden, Crow went to Crowbar, and then Victor Calderon turned me out and turned my whole life around and, you know, expanded from there. I educated myself more and started listening to techno and house music. And then I got introduced to the man himself, Danny Teneglia, and then that was it after that. So how did, you, how did that introduction happen? Um, I, was, I was playing at Pacha. Uh, and uh, my first gig was a Victor Calderon gig. And um, the weekend after, two weeks after, you know, this guy was like, you know what, you need to go listen to Danny. And I'm like, oh, who's Danny? I don't know who's Danny. They're like, yo, he's my astro, you gotta go. Uh, I went there and I think it was a back to school party and that was it. No, vinyl reunion, which I've unfortunately never been blessed to go. But uh, once I was there, that was it, it was a wrap. Danny was everything to me. Danny is still everything to me. What so. What was it? I mean, because I I mean I've I feel the same way. Yeah, we feel the same yeah. way. Yeah, Danny. So is, what was it for you where you were like? He's just I'm getting goosebumps just talking about the guy. Um, Danny is just he makes you feel it. Like he makes you experience that moment. It's all about that moment, you know. And that's what did it to me just he's he's not just a dj he's a dj's dj yes. like you know like he's a performer like that's he plays everything when i tell you from jazz to house to 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 everything and, and that's what opened my mind it's, in this dj business it's all about opening your mind and experimenting and, and trying something new and and, and just just broadening broadening your your span of music genre you know a lot of these kids these days they they start and they're just like yo i just want to play techno and it's just like no it's about 
to me, my science is making women dance. It's all about making women dance because it's a science. It's not, I don't play for me. I don't play just for just the crowd. If women are happy, men are buying drinks. If men are buying drinks, the bar is happy. If the bar is happy, you're getting paid at the end of the night. So it's just like it's all... It is the truth. It's a format, and I I used it from since hip hop, and I continue using it now today. So that's that's how I am. So do you? So so do you try to model yourself like how Danny sort of? Well, that's the thing. You know, like what I notice about me coming up is that I like to take bits and pieces of everyone. And yep. make something new, you know. I don't just stick to that person, or because like Danny's my number one, but I also love Cassie. She's my, which she also listens to Danny, and in, she takes a lot from Danny, you know. Um, at the time, it was the Carl Cox, another performer, you know. All these performers, you know. That's what I, I look up to, and I'm, I consider myself a performer, not just you know a person just playing two tracks, you know. Mm-hmm. Like people come and they're just like Simon. You make me literally enjoy this. Like, I don't just sit there and go buy drinks all night. I, I'm jamming to you because you're making me have a good time. So you know, I take a little bit of everybody and do something. Yeah. So what would you what would you say the first break you caught was? Oh, it was <laughs> it was the Victor Calderon night because there was like there was like eight DJs on the lineup. Just so happened, I get there, thank God. I'm always an early, early bird. I get there early. At the time, the promoter was Chicho. Love you, Chicho. Uh, he's like, yo, all the DJs canceled. It's you for 12 hours. <laughs> my, my first time at Pacha. So I'm like, wait, what? What, what do you say? He's like, yo, it's you all night. I'm like, wow. And that was it. So you must have been pumped. Oh man, I was I was so that night was so magical because I, I'll never forget my friend came with me and um, I was feeling sick or aka drunk and uh, he started DJing for me. This is a funny story. And he breaks his ankle while DJing. But he's just so messed up. He wait, continues wait, wait. to DJ for another six hours. He breaks his ankle in broke the DJ his ankle. booth. Like he was doing a dance move while playing a track, and he lit a crack. He's crying, he's in tears, cold sweats, but he's, you know what? I gotta do this. I was like, all right, do your thing, bro. <laughs> and then he came back to watch him the next week in crutches. They almost didn't want to let him in. They're like, yo, what happened to you? I actually broke my ankle in your establishment. They're just, they didn't even want to let him in. He must have been going in. No, hard in boy, he was just, he was pumped. Six he was, hours. He was going ankle. in hard. Exactly. Uh, he jumped up and down and he landed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The main, main floor that rubber right thing, that, you know that rubber thing that, that, that they put in the bars so that yes. the bartenders don't the, slip? The holes and stuff. Why yeah. they had that in the DJ booth? No clue. Anyway, his foot got caught. Rap. That's probably one of the funniest things. <laughs> yeah, man. The main floor Pasha made people do some crazy things. Yeah, it's nuts, man. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So you it. did the whole night. Well, well it was the basement. The basement okay. of Pasha. Okay. And uh, I kind of made my name there because that's what everybody remembers me. I mean, I was DJing Pacha basement every other week. Uh, and it was constant. And it was just the people coming and they're like, Simon, you're killing it. You're killing it. Holy crap. And it's, people still tell you today, like, you know, Actually, the best, the best gig everybody still talks about is the JP Classics that I did downstairs. And they're just like, wow. Like, we still talk about that today. So it's like, it's cool, man. I, I, Pacha was the place. So I see you brought some vinyl. Where are you shopping for this vinyl? Uh, well, I'm shopping at Halcyon. Uh, Halcyon has a very good uh, uh, new program now that I'm really liking. Um, that nothing was wrong with the old program when it was in Dumbo, but like you know, the re- the record selection is a little bit more open now, and it, and it's cool. And I've been shopping there, uh, the online stuff, Discogs. Unfortunately, you gotta wait like six weeks if you're getting a, a record from Germany or something. But uh, a lot of you gotta dig. Sometimes you gotta just take a trip to Detroit, and go to the record shops so there. What are what are the prices these days of records? Oh man. You know, I feel bad for the record stores because, you know, they got to make money, so they have to add on. Uh, the, the the exports is what kills you, you know. The ones, when they're getting these, these guys, the records is probably, what, $13, and they, you know, Ameri- 
That's what America is. You gotta, you wanna make money, so they add another five, six dollars to it. So like, you know, you're getting wow, so an a two track for like twenty one dollars. Wow. Well, I mean, I mean imports know. were always yeah. I mean, imports yeah. were I mean, always imports, like nine dollars, ten dollars. Yeah, imports yeah. But I mean, it's expensive. you know we haven't bought records in yeah, know, yeah. It's a lot years. of money now. So you know, I mean, you're getting what three records for sixty bucks now? It's crazy. But um, you also a one records. You know, they got a lot of old old records or just gems that you have to spend five hours to dig for. And a uh, ones in the Lower East Side that have really so good. Do you enjoy playing vinyl again? Of course, man. I mean, well, not only that, is that some of these, everything's a cycle, man. You know, when I first started, it was vinyl, and then CDs came in. And then from CDs, the USBs came in. And now, it's, these artists realize that it's not special anymore putting it digital. It's not special anymore. Like, you can, if it's special, that means that the, the record is like, 500 releases that's what makes it special because once it's out that's it like, you, you're not getting it it's sold out you know so a lot of these a lot of the new artists are making music vinyl only so like you have to buy the record now. there's no b port well there's still b port but they're not putting anything out of there right so wait so so artists are not putting records out. i they mean they know? are but it's like the, the records that you want it's it's not it's just not digital it's because it's just not special enough you know you know they want to make their music that special that you have to run out and go buy it or so, else so for you to even find out about these records you have to be in the record store digging for digging of course for yeah i'm i'm on halcyon all the time their website is amazing um dex de which is expensive all these European websites are extremely expensive, but you know you gotta be. If this is what you want to do, this is what you gotta do. So right. you know, I'm on it every day, every day. Every day. So how many records are you buying monthly? I'm spending at least like three hundred dollars wow. <laughs> a month, and that's not even a lot to be honest with you. So uh, I need to be spending like four or five hundred dollars. So like, if you're doing a set, you know, what would say your percentage of records be? I would say half the sets like digital and records, you know, because there's some that you could find, you know, there's some goodies still digital. So uh, I have both USB and um, records. So do you think this is a good thing, say, for the up and coming people? Yes, it is. I mean, you know, because a lot of these artists just want to go straight to Tractor or Serato. But like, you know, you got to learn the fundamentals first, you know, you, you know, you put some of these guys in a room and like you see them DJing like. It's about being comfortable, man. I, I say if you learn on vinyl, CDJ should be a jippy. You know, it's all about just going with the flow, feeling comfortable with your, I call it wallet. It's whatever you have in your wallet. You should be comfortable with it. You know what I mean? Um, and it's good for these new guys. You know, they need to learn the right way, the correct way. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you, you see a lot of these guys, um, that stayed on CDs for very long, then they went I to the did. sticks. Yeah, yeah. Some people didn't go to Tractor, and then now people are going to Tractor. I noticed that Danny, a couple of years ago, he made the switch. Yes, he but he could do play. that, though. You know what I mean? The guy's been spinning for so long. I mean, like, why not? No, yeah, no. I, you know, I mean, like, he embraced the technology. Of course, you know. It took him a while, but, you know, Danny's daddy, you know. So, yeah, love that guy. So, production. So as far as production, how much time are you spending in the studio? Yes. Well, now I'm dedicating a lot more time. You know, I mean, I realized just recently, you know, you know, as, a, as an artist, full-time jobs are for suckers. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't, I realize, you know, I, this is not what I want to do. One day I was at work and I was like, you know what? I know what I want to do. And this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, I mean, I need to pay it put more attention to music and you know just a couple of weeks ago stuff is working you know I have more time to, to put stuff out working with a lot of engineers emails back and forth and stuff is finally getting done so I have some stuff coming out I have actually I have I do have a record label that's waiting for me to put something out <laughs> um, but uh, yeah the productions are coming around well I'm learning I'm not the thing is with production is like you gotta f you, you find yourself as a DJ and you have to find yourself as a producer too and that takes a long time a lot of hours long time so that I'm in the process of that yeah. right now. Are, I you mean, are you collaborating with any other uh, DJs? Uh, well, 
well, music wise, Eric Sosa is, you know, he's been helping me a lot. He's also have a lot of good music that's that he's um, dropping. I actually have him featured in one of my parties coming up. Um, I'm mostly working with him. I'm more comfortable with him. So, uh, and then in, in, in our future, once people start hearing my name more often, production wise, you know, I'll start working with everybody else. What uh, what do you guys use when you're producing in the studio? Uh, Ableton. I'm an Ableton guy. Uh, it's very user friendly. Um, it's a really cool program. But I'm also trying to learn hardware. Also, a lot of organic sounds with hardware. So, it, like I said, time, hours, devotion, sacrifice. You know. So, any management? Are you uh, anybody managing? You? Yes, he's in the back right now. His name is Mert from Antisocial. What's up, Mert? What's going on? <laughs> He's an amazing guy. Um, I have gotten plenty of offers from a lot of people, but you know what? Mert's very, he just, he has his foot down. He's serious, and that's what, that's what attracted to me. You know, like, a lot of these guys, they want to go party, they want to drink, do whatever, and the next thing you know, when it's time for business, yo, bro, I'm sleeping, man. I can't talk to you right now. Nah, no, it's about business, and that's what Mert's about, business, and that's why I work with him. That's good. It's definitely yeah. good. So, uh, what's anything coming up? Any gigs coming up for you? Yes, I have a residency at TBA uh, once a month, every second Saturday. It's called Groove. Uh, I feature a lot of my friends and also a lot of artists, really good artists around New York area. I mean, my main focus of the party is just to pay attention to the crowd. That's what it's about. Like a lot of these DJs, once again, they don't care about the crowd and the people that's paying money to go see you. That's my focus. I want to see everyone dancing all the time. Like I don't want to see nobody just socializing because I don't. When I go to parties, I don't socialize. Come to hear the DJ. I want to hear what he's about. He or she. Um, yeah, and that's what groups about, man. I just want people dancing. So are, are people dancing or are people yeah, right. staring at the DJ? With well, their that's another out? thing, too, because that's the era that we're in right now. You know, everybody's so focused on just staring at the DJ and having their phones on. And, and it's, you know, you, you got to try to get people out of that. And, and that's another job a DJ have upon all the other jobs they have. It's to get people to put that phone down and, and, and dance. That's what you're there for. It, it's, it's the truth. I mean, it's funny. I, I went out for dinner to a restaurant. Okay. I'm not going to name restaurants or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, an old, it's a place where older people congregate and hang out. It's not like young kids, whatever, running around. Mm -hmm. And they have a DJ that goes on like around 10 o'clock, and he plays all disco classics. Nice. And what was amazing to see is that generation of people that were out and this guy was rocking disco classics nice. and the dance floor was rocking and mm -hmm. people were dancing and having a good time. And it was just, it was sort of nice to just sit there and reflect and just see like, these, these were old school clubbers mm -hmm. that probably went to clubs like Studio 54 and, stuff, and places mm -hmm. like that, the mm -hmm. fun house. And they were just all out partying yeah, on the dance floor. No phones, none of that Nothing. crap or socializing or the girlfriend, just not you, babe. Just a girlfriend, just in your ear, just talking to you all night. Like, no, no, let me, let me listen to the music. That's, that's what it's about. So uh, I got that going on. Then I have another residency that's starting up, uh, Bushwick AV, which is another dope, dope party, uh, after hours. Uh, every once a month also, that's going to be really cool. I'm featuring di more different artists. I'm always trying to do something new, but at the end of the day, it comes back to the crowd. I, I want to focus on crowd. Because once again, a lot of these after hours you go to, and everybody's just standing there and looking at each other and talking about the next party they want to go to. No, bro, you're at my party, you're dancing. That's it. That's what I, that's what I want to get involved with, get people to move. So, yeah. so as far as music preparation, did you prepare something for us tonight? or? Uh, I like to go with the flow, man. You know, I, I just like to just put a record on and then just ride it. See what, see, I mean, it's a little bit more difficult because, you know, it's not a crowd for me to feed off of. But um, I just want you guys to enjoy it. Yeah. That's what I want. Well, I mean, yeah. there's something about being here that you're going to get caught up there. Uh, well, I'm already comfortable. 
So that's all it takes. There's like, it's just, I'm comfortable this, here. There's something about the function house yeah, yeah, yeah. that gets everybody when they get on the desk. Nice. I'm excited for we're that. We're looking man. forward to hearing you play. Thank and you, we appreciate man. you coming down. Nice, nice. I'm excited. So we're going to take a two-minute break. I'm going to get Simon up on the decks. Nice. He's going to rock for us at the function house. Peace. Peace. Peace.